human beings, the smartest living creature to exist. Or at least, that's what we like to think. Although, I can think of a few people that could be outsmarted by an average African chimpanzee, but in the overall, no species compares to us when we consider that little tiny thing that makes you have the occasional existential crisis, anxiety, depression, and that lovely sense of worthlessness that comes up once a week and makes you question every single decision you've ever made. What? What do you mean you don't know what I'm talking about? I thought everyone went through the same daily existential dread. No. <clears throat> I'm talking, of course, about consciousness. For those of you who don't know, consciousness is a bit like the Israelo-Palestinian conflict. No one really knows what's going on with it, but everyone seems to have an opinion on it. And since things aren't already confusing enough, I thought I'd add my own definition to the lot, which is the ability to observe one's own thoughts and react to them. Now, Let's try a quicker view of what makes humanity great and thus undeniably prove our intellect. We first engaged in philosophy, a science born out of wonder and awe to the universe, a result of human consciousness, to finding out what we are and what our purpose is. And from the same sense of wonder, we also created the religions, from the most primitive ones that had the sun as an entity to be worshipped and feared to the most deeply thought out and thoroughly constructed ones that quenched our insatiable thirst for answers for thousands of years. We built timeless temples filled with the most magnificent works of art as proof of our gratefulness for our existence, for the gift that is consciousness. We discovered physics and math and used them to understand the universe to lengths we wouldn't have ever dreamed of and even created for ourselves a fighting chance against the most ferocious destroyer, nature and came to have an open eye into its inner workings. Surely, no other living creature is capable of getting near even our most pathetic achievement, and that's why we may call ourselves intelligent, because when we look at a monkey, we may find it cute or funny, except for baboons, because they rip your fucking face off, but we know they're inferior to us intellectually, so our way of defining our superiority is by measure of comparative intelligence, say, if intelligence is a scale, we are at the top of it, as far as we know. But now, I want you to try and imagine something. Let's take someone from human history whose intelligence is undeniable. Einstein, for example. Now, try and imagine Einstein, the man that gave us the theory of relativity, that is, until this day, the most accurate and aesthetic description of how the universe works, and whose understanding of physics for his time was something beyond measure. Now, I want you to take this image of this man that I just described and project it into a monkey without affecting Mr. Einstein's intellect. And by making Einstein a monkey, we also made the fall of humanity monkeys. That's a shitload of monkeys. Since we're no longer human, surely there must be another human race to replace us. Let's say the new human race comes across Mr. Monkey Einstein. How do you think they would look at him? Do you think they would recognize him as the exceptional and smart Mr. Monkey Einstein that he is? Well, of course they would. He's the best of us, but they would see him as intelligent only compared to us, regular monkeys, the same way we used to look at smart monkeys. They may study him in the lab and give him some deep mathematical equations that a toddler and a human would be able to solve, but their perception of reality is so greater than our monkey primitive race that even genius Einstein, with his deep and thorough understanding of physics, wouldn't be sufficient to even begin to scratch the surface of their own intelligence. They would have a level of consciousness that would make them see parts of reality we are completely blind to. It would be like a deaf person trying to understand cell. Maybe they would be able to break free of the biological boundaries that keep us chained to nature's will. Maybe for them, reproducing, survival, companionship would be futile pursuits. Only an underdeveloped being, maybe a cute little monkey, would pursue. Their approach to life would be so radically different from us that you would feel completely alienated from them. Let's take, for example, something we universally value as a species, like family. Every person you know would say that family is one of the most important things that brings meaning to one's life. But if we view it from an evolutionary perspective, like a superior species probably would, Family bonding is just another way for nature to maximize chances of survival by making us take care of the people we share the most genes with. So, if they break free of their biological chains, they might get rid of the notion of family as a whole, and 
This is just one of the many ways that would shape in the end a completely different thought process from us and general outlook on life. If you're questioning the morality of it, you should know that we've already broken a lot of our biological chains over the last century. Birth control would be heads up the most important blow we've ever laid on nature. And over the next decades, we will be able to create artificial sperm, eggs and wombs, thus creating life with no father nor mother, which means no family. So this is not mere speculation, but something we're already in the path of. Of course, the biggest obstacle to achieving that would be a question of morality, but the new human species wouldn't be stopped by such things. For them, it might just be something trivial and obvious, not even worth arguing about. By this description, I hope we can agree or at least begin to grasp how the next level of intelligence would be shaped. Try imagining now repeating this step numerous times. We take the new human race, make them monkeys and create another superior human life form. It wouldn't take long before we would start to lose sight of how the intellect or the level of consciousness of those beings would even be. You would just be like a dog watching the moon try to make sense of it. And yes, it's a Morgan Freeman quote from the movie Lucy. And no, I feel no shame about it. We can't know for sure how the brains of those godlike creatures would be, but we can at least try with our most boundless tool. Imagination! For example, maybe they would attain levels of consciousness that would make it possible for them to be able to affect matter through thought alone, or even crazier, time itself, which would prove that time and matter are related to consciousness, no biggie. Maybe what we consider as the universe would be actually a cage for them, and they would break free of it and go on and do something only mighty beings like them do. Like, I don't know, making gravity sauce? Or using black holes as tennis balls? Drinking liquid pasta? Creating other universes and introducing the religions to living creatures on it that titles them as gods to be worshipped and threaten to throw in hell whoever doesn't accept them as so? Who knows, honestly? The point is, the concept of intelligence can be stretched so far that we can't even imagine its limits. Are you feeling as smart now, my fellow slightly more developed chimpanzee? Okay, to be fully honest, we're also the first species out of more than 8.7 million to walk the step of consciousness, so we might give ourselves some credit for that. Our consciousness may also be the final step of evolution, and we just might be the most evolved beings capable of existing. So there's also that. So. The question of our greatness is still a matter we can't pronounce ourselves on. And I didn't actually answer anything here and just made things a bit more confusing than they already were. You might consider hitting the subscribe button if you feel like getting confused on the regular, or perhaps even make it a hobby of yours.